Hey folks. Hi. Welcome. We're back. That's Beth over there. Live. That's me. This is Patty Smith Gardner, our first guest of the EGA National Cem Cem Cemetery. That's good. <laughs> no, no, That's it's good. Not a cemetery. It's a <laughs> seminar. A seminar. <laughs> That's good. All right, we're off on the right foot. Yep. So Patty's joining us. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, first day, Beth and I have been scrambling all day long doing videos. Uh, look on a YouTube channel. We put up three, three, three videos today, and we have two or three more already recorded right. and more lined up for tomorrow. So there'll be, uh, um, yeah, lots of stuff to watch. And then, of course, live tonight and then uh, Friday night and Saturday night, too. So uh, we'll be doing all of that. Now, we have two sponsors and of course, as always, encourage you to um, uh, support our sponsors because they're what makes it possible for us to be here this week. And um, uh, the first one's a new sponsor, uh, Middle Twin. And uh, check this out, particularly if you are uh, responsible for a, a local chapter, regional chapter. This is worth checking out. It's a group, uh, Middle Twin is, is a software, uh, online software package, a group and event management platform dedicated to making membership management easy for organizations such as EGA. The St. Paul Needleworkers, the Minnesota chapter of EGA, is using Middle Twin to securely handle membership dues, coordinate events and registration, and communicate with their members. Uh, Middle Twin offers uh, features such as secure member-only feed that keeps members in touch with one another, and a group activity calendar to keep everyone engaged in new classes, retreats, guest speakers, and other events throughout the life of their membership. Uh, of course, privacy and security is built right into the thing, and they don't uh, share anything. They don't share any member information, and uh, full customer support to all group managers, as group, well as group members, uh, giving you what, the help you need when you need it. And so at middletwin.com, down there in the corner, is where you go and check it out. And I have to say, I spent some time uh, on the website, and uh, if, if you need some help managing all those communication things, in your chapter or regional chapter or uh, whatever it is, uh, worth checking out because it's, um, yeah, it, it look and it looks really easy to set up and, and easy to manipulate. So, so check that out. And then our other sponsor, uh, Sassy Jack Stitchery. Uh, thank you, Kim, for uh, sponsoring yes. uh, these shows. And when when we talk about all this needlework here in the next three days, uh, you're ready to buy thread and charts and ground cloth. Uh, Sassy Jack Stitchery is, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they are an ongoing sponsor. Kim is an ongoing sponsor and supporter of Fiber Talk, and uh, we encourage you to use Kim. Uh, and plus, she's bored. You know, yeah. order some stuff yeah, and give her, to yeah, do right now. give her something to do. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Sassy Jack Stitchery and Middle Twin, we appreciate the support. And we have a lineup tonight of things, but we have Patty here. How many EGA? Seminars? Have I been to? Yes. My first one was in 2006. So I've probably been to 10, 15? Yeah. Maybe. You take classes every time? Oh, yes. Well, no, I'm lying. Don't lie. No. Okay. Do it's not recorded. lie on this show. Yeah, it's, re it's being recorded, right? The EGA is like the mafia. Once you're in, they get you. Okay. You can't get out because they pull you back in again. So, uh, I was asked to do a job for the chapter, and then I'm asked to do a job for the region, and then, of course, when you work for the region, when your region has seminar, you get jobs. So I have done um, the banquet favor chairperson job for our seminar in Alexandria, Virginia. So, uh, And then for, after that, I did fundraising, so I had to be here at seminar running the fundraising table for about mm. three, three different seminars. So about four of them, I was here the whole time, but I was working. Yeah. So no, I wasn't able to take classes. Yeah. This has been the first one where I got to come and just be a human being. So I'm really, <laughs> this, this year I was think I was looking forward to more than anything. Yeah. Because I've, yeah, it's finally I was able to come and just take classes. And, it's what, and what classes do we have lined up this week? <sighs> Jane Nicholas, but. Yeah. 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 Because of COVID, they could not commit to getting the international teachers here. It was just—it's too much with right. visas, et cetera. So 
um, they chose an excellent, excellent teacher to teach Jane's class. And it's Celeste Chalasani, who is... Yeah, that's, not, that's yeah. not so bad, huh? Yeah, she's, she's aces. I've also done pieces by her, and, and she's an excellent teacher. So she's doing a really good job. Jane, she's doing a really good job for you. In case Jane's listening. <laughs> yeah, that's not, uh, that's not a bad substitute at all. No, we take no, that, no, yeah. No, she's, no. she's awesome. Yeah. So that's a stump work class? It is. So stump work is one of the things that when I found the EGA, it was like this huge sunburst opened in my life. I had no idea you could even take classes, but I had heard of stump work. And when I walked up to the table at this place I went, I went to a, um, an embroidery conference or an embroidery showcase, embroidery and quilting showcase. And they had a table, of course, that, you know, as an organization, right. they go to these events and they set up a table. And the EGA local chapter had a table and they had these things out on it that people, people from the chapter had made. And I walked over and I looked at it and I thought, Wow, is that stump work? And they said, yes, that's one of the one of our members made that. And I'm, I said, I have heard of that, but I've never seen it. I said, how did she do that? And they said, well, she took a class. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> I've been a professional needle artist my entire life. I had no idea you could take classes in in doing needlework. And I I quickly went home and looked it up and found my local chapter. And um, you know. Blah blah blah. Now I'm in charge of like quite a lot. So that's what happens when you, you right. You know, you stick your finger in, and then they just like draw you in. Like, no, like but the, the EGA. I I I'm, I jokingly say the EGA saved my life. I, I was at, you know you're at this weird point. My kids were in high school. You're no longer doing things like with all little kids. And I don't know. Your life is in a transition when your children get into high school and college. And I had now I was finally able to maybe think about doing something personally at night instead of laundry and, and getting back to my job. Um, so <laughs> suddenly I, I had time on my hands and I started thinking about getting back to doing something creative with my hands for me. And that was right when I found the EGA. And not only embroidery, but people. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I was, and my first seminar was, it was magical. You walk into this hotel and there's 700 people who get you. Right. You know, you don't get that <laughs> normally yeah, in yeah. your life. Yeah. You, everybody there was just as excited about embroidery as I am. You know, you talk to people, my sisters don't do any of this, my family doesn't do any of this. You talk to people in your life about embroidery and, you know. Yeah. Right, right. right. And they, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, let me ask you. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. You know, don't get it at all. Yeah. But How long did it take you to do that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> And don't ask how much it costs. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to yeah. discuss that. Or the ultimate. Do you sell your thing? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that, no, that one. No, yeah. no, mm -hmm. no. That'll be a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't. You don't have that much money. Right. right? Yeah. 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 So, the, but they get your passion, and right. they, they, you know, everybody there gets you, and it's just so. It's such a joy to walk up and down the hallways because, let me tell you, there is nobody like Stitchers. Mm -hmm. You've been here now. What do you think? You walk oh. these hallways. Yep. Yes. Everybody is happy yep. everybody is so excited to say hi to you they're really friendly right. it's just we are a wonderful group mm -hmm. of people. yeah the people sitting in corners just contently stitching yeah i know, yeah. I know right yeah, yeah. Like nobody can get to me yeah, <laughs> yeah. covid yeah. did not affect stitchers the same way it affected other people because bored yeah. no no never, never i have to ever, stay home thank you ever, ever. <laughs> no. yeah. yes yeah. it was it was it we just transitioned into okay we'll just do this at home yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So stump work, what other needlework do you do? Are you one uh, of those that does well, everything? Well, Cynthia Jackson lately got me really, really excited about gold work. I did her oh. Mariner's Compass piece. Oh. From, it was supposed to be in the seminar in, in Boston last year, but she mm -hmm. offered it as an online class instead. Mm -hmm. oh, that thing is beautiful. I feel madly in love with it. It's the one piece out of all my years of doing embroidery, it is the one piece that both of my children and my husband fought over. Oh, that they wow. all they all wanted it. So that's very unusual because usually they are the oh that's nice. Yeah. Um, they appreciate what I do, but they fought. They were, no that one's mine. That one's mine. That one's mine. <laughs> so we we hung it on the wall in the house in Maine. So it stays there until you know I can come up with another one for them. But so Cynthia Jackson's gold work. So now I love gold work. Uh huh. So I have to start taking classes in gold work again. But uh, Jane Nicholas, the queen of stump work, I've mm -hmm. taken classes from her and. Um, uh, what, what other kind of need? I knit. I make all my own clothes. I knit. I do my own plumbing. Um, what else? <laughs> what about your? Oh, beading and jewelry. Yes, I do a lot of beading and jewelry. Oh. Um, 
So other than that, I'm just, you know. Oh, nothing else to yeah, do. You're, not yeah, much. no. She, it, yeah. I don't like, I, but everybody says, oh, wow. You just my husband, oh, wow, boy, she's really good at all that stuff. But I, but I don't cook. I don't like to cook. Oh, okay. I, I can because I have to, but I hate to cook. Hate it. Okay. If I spend three hours making something, you can wear it for years, you can own it for years, you can mm -hmm. carry it around for years. I spend three hours cooking. And it's gone. And 20 four hours minutes. later, they look at you and they want, they want it again. <laughs> what would you do with the four hours I spent? The, yeah. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. No, I hate that. So, yeah. not a big, not a big fan of it. Okay. Food. All right. All right. Eating, yes. But oh, cooking, okay, you'll no, do that part. Cooking, but, yeah. No, no, okay. No. Excellent. So, uh, how many classes this week? Two, three, four, five? For me? Yeah. Just the one. It's a four-day four class. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I have, in the past, come to seminar and load it up with, and, and a lot of people do because it's a real opportunity. So, it, uh, most of the time I come if I have the chance and I take a two-day class. A one day class and then another two day class and I'll work in every lecture, every thing, every tour, every et cetera that, that is offered during the period of time. But I have learned with the Jane Nick taking a Jane Nicholas class that there's homework. That's it. Uh -huh. Right. So if you if you sign up for too much, you're not gonna be able to get all the work done in order to keep doing the class. Uh -huh. So for her, when I'm taking her class, I don't overload myself. Uh -huh. So okay. no, I'm just taking the Jane class. So Friday then you're gonna do the winning ways lectures? I am. I am, because one of my really good friends is presenting. Oh, yes. Yes, so I, I really want to see her presentation. And I've never done Winning Ways. I've heard about it every single, I've, that's the one thing I have missed at seminar every time. So I was determined that this year I'm going to get to do Winning Ways. So I am doing that. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, Patty, thanks for stopping by. Oh, I'm so glad Appreciate you guys it. are here. Yeah. This is really exciting. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah. Having a lot of fun. Let's get everybody else in the world as excited about embroidery as you guys are. We, yes, can, we can try. Awesome. We can try. All right, thanks. Thank thanks you. for stopping. Yep. See you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Beth, come over for a second. Oh, God, no. Lose the mask. <laughs> come over for a second. Just real quick. This is, this is Beth Lindsay. She's the outgoing marketing director for EGA. And uh, did a show with her oh, a year ago, something like that. Something so, like that. So just a second. We won't keep you long because, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but Beth, Beth has uh, instrumental in making this work for us, getting all the connections, making all the arrangements. Huge effort on Beth's part. And thank you for that because, uh, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. It's, We're thrilled um, to have you. Yeah. We so really it's been are. great. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a great, great being here and being able to see um, EGA seminar in person again. Yeah. So. Well, and, you know, you're both members, so next right. time you have to come back and take classes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been drooling. We were drooling over the um, what's being offered for 2022, and, um, yeah, Some there's a few. pretty stunning pieces. Oh, that's yes. the lineup, yeah. 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 So, well, thanks. You're thanks. very welcome. That's Beth Lindsay right there. <laughs> yes. Uh, really, really do. You've done an awful lot for us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you Made so much. Made it possible. So, all right. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. You're done. All right. <laughs> we won't torture Thank you me. anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, you guys. You're Thank welcome. you. Uh, All right. Oops. So that's, um, there we go. We appreciate uh, Patty and, and uh, Beth joining us. And um, Beth's right here. I don't need to have these in my ears. It feels weird. I know. And it really it, does. It just feels a little strange. Um, okay, we got here Wednesday night. We went to the banquet. Yes. We have pictures. Don't worry. Just go. Make noise. Go. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> oh, we got <laughs> you won't keep You won't keep that door quiet. No. Uh. Um, well, let's just put up the pictures here. Yes. Um, because we, we've arranged photos to tell the story so you don't have to look at us, um, which, you know, that's a, our service. So... Here, this is the banquet. Now there's, what did we hear, 400? 430. Yeah. And, you know, 500 people showed up, but then, you know, people got nervous and understandably, understandably, and they were still happy. And then some people, of course, didn't want to come to the banquet. They tried to space it out as much as possible, obviously, but... Um, yeah, they have taken every precaution. Of course, I, I mean, it's just been, I'm sure, uh, well, we, we interviewed the chairman. Uh, watch for that video. Uh, you can just imagine what they went through to bring together uh, 500 people and do it safely. And I, uh, as far as we can tell, they have taken every step uh, here. The Marriott in Chicago has taken every step to uh, keep it as safe as possible. People right. wearing masks, 
uh, the whole shooting match. I mean, I, I have not felt uncomfortable at all. And um, uh, even the banquet, they, you could tell it was a much larger room than normal. Tables were spaced out, not as many chairs at a table. Uh, they, they have done the thing. So, uh, you know, kudos to them. Uh, right. Well, number one, for just pulling it off, because right. I'm sure, uh, well, they said they were going to do it in May, do it live at the end of May. But I'm sure, truth be known, two, three weeks ago, they were still wondering just what was what right. was going to happen. And, uh, and if they could even pull it off and, yeah. and, and get everybody to come. We met. It was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful to see so many stitchers all together that in that one room. And you knew everybody was excited to be there. And um, just it was enjoyable. Yeah. It was just an enjoyable time. And then, of course, now at the banquet, then they have the awards. They have a whole bunch of awards. They had to give out the 2020 awards. Right. Because cause that got canceled. So it was a double a double award thing. What were some of the okay. awards? So they gave, um, it was the Golden Thread Award and um, was the first one, which is for basically for those who volunteer above and beyond. And um, first they're nominated by your chapter, then each that's sent to the region. And from the region, they pick someone from each region. And from each region, they finally pick um, the person who gets it for, for national. So um, the 2020 winner was Joyce McCain from the South Central region. Um, and then um, in 2021, it was Laura Smith for the, from the Carolinas region. And that's a big award. We, um, since I've been in EGA, um, we've only had one member that I know of in my guild that has received that. And just on in the region, that's hard to get because you think of all the, the chapters in the region that say, okay, this person has done a whole, above and beyond volunteering um, to receive this award. It's not just like, yeah, you show up at meetings and your education. It's, you know, you're always, you're always serving the, the guild. Well, what, what did you say about the person that won it, all the things she was doing? She was, she was uh, the person who, um, she had, her, when we had um, workshops, she always hosted the workshop person. She was the person we went to her home for stitching. She always was opening her house for things. She ran um, fundraisers for us. Um, if there was volunteer work, you know, um, she set up um, a cookbook so we could sell it. She did all the work for that. She did tons of work for our guild and she won our region Golden Thread Award. And that's, it, it, it's a big deal. And to get to someone to nominate you um, is amazing. Just, and she was, she did above and beyond. It was tons of um, volunteer hours that she spent for our guild. Yep. So congratulations to Joyce and Laura. And with, with double year of, of, um, of awards, I, I give them credit. They tried it through them quite quickly. So, <laughs> right, right. Because that could have been a long haul, but uh, no, they, they did a good job. So the banquet was really nice. And then uh, this morning we got to, uh, well, okay, we got to go to the bookstore. Yes. This is... I think they had already it had been decimated yeah, by the, the time we went there. <laughs> yeah. Um, because someone said, oh, a book you want is there, Beth. And it, no, it was not there. It was gone by the time I showed up at the bookstore today. So, But I did find um, Jane Nicholas's stump work embroidery book, so I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, they, they, they had a, when we looked in uh, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Yes. Uh, and then when we got there today, uh, yeah, it had been hit hard. And uh, because, well, you pick eight bucks for that book. And yes. a lot of one and two and three dollar books. Right. All used books, but, you know, who cares? Um, yeah, right. a lot. Right. So. So uh, good books for if you're doing any sort of um, part of needlework. So, um you know, any of hand embroidery, they had, they had one that I was really tempted by that was pulled thread work, but I behaved myself. I didn't, I didn't get that one. In case my husband's listening, I didn't get that one. I just got the one that was, I needed for my stash, so. <laughs> We're so proud of you. I know, your, your but I, I haven't gone to the um, boutique without Gary yet, so <clears throat> we'll talk about that later. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's the boutique. Now, we did a video with Kathy Raganelli of the Inspired Needle, mm -hmm. and it, the Inspired Needle in Lamont, Illinois, is uh, she brought over what she say about an eighth of her shop. Right. And uh, so there's a video we talked to her about her shop, and 
and uh, getting this boutique together. This is just one photo of it, but the video, we actually went all the way around and toured uh, a good number of the things that she had to offer. And uh, so the uh, shop serves two purposes. One, just a needlework shop, right. but then also uh, when you show up and you forgot your needles, right? you get a place to get them. Right, yeah. and, and she said she sold out of tax immediately because yeah, yeah. all, all the canvas people needed tax for their stretcher bars. And I know I had one time attended something and I, I think I'd forgotten tax. So it was just nice to have a store on the premises while you're at a needlework store. I mean, at a big needlework event like this. And to set that up, you know, she talks about that, but that's a ton of work, a ton of work. Yep. So, uh, okay, I know Beth, Beth will not go home empty-handed. <laughs> that will well, not I, happen. I saw, I saw something that I, I needed, so I was need. I, I just need to go back need. and that I desire. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, as long as we're honest here. As long as we're honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As well as just, it's it's nice to see them in person rather than just shopping online. Yeah. Although, although Kim, Kim, I'm sure I could find something online. <clears throat> yes. Too. So yeah. anyway. It's there. So that's uh, that's a real plus there. And boy, during the breaks, uh, we well, we were filming and uh, a break in the classes uh, came right. up and uh, we had to get out of there. Right, because yeah. it was just it was just busy. It was just busy. It was. Um, so let's see. They, they had the banquet. They have uh, a grab and go uh, breakfast and lunch. Right, and they said those ran really well. We didn't we didn't do that. Um, we kind of missed that. We were doing working on um, videos and things for the show, but that's nice because if you're going to a class, you know, to go someplace to get a bite to eat. You know, that takes time. You really don't have a ton of it. You have like maybe an hour between classes just to grab something and, and sit and eat. That's, that's nice. It's nice yep. that they're offering that. Yeah, really well handled. And, uh, but, and it is fun to walk around because uh, we're on the second floor and registration and uh, the boutique and things are on the seventh floor. So there's classes all between. Right. And when you go to the different floors, invariably there will be somebody in a corner with their feet propped up, stitching, <laughs> and uh, you know they made a little nest. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And they're all settled yeah. in and stitching. And actually, the volunteers are too. So if you go, um, if you ever are able to do a region seminar or um, like the national one um, next year, um, I would advise seeing if you could volunteer. Um, people brought their, they you were encouraged generally to bring your stitching because you do have downtime, but you're just there to like. There's people, you know to hold your bags if you go into the exhibit. They don't want you bringing stuff into that or drinks or whatever. Um, you know, maybe you can answer questions, um, whatever they need. So, you know, to go and do that and volunteer if you're a member of an EGA, it's a great way to be involved in the organization too. I highly yeah. recommend it. Yeah, qu quiet times and, and all the stitching comes out. Uh, yes, yep, all yes, the volunteers yes. sitting there stitching. Because that's when we're doing our things is, is in the quiet times. Right. And they are, they're all sitting there stitching. So uh, it, a lot of projects. Right. Gonna, yeah, a lot of progress this week. Yep, yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah, so but real nice. Uh, everything's spaced out. Uh, I don't know how many classrooms they have. They have a ton of them. Right. And uh, but it's um, and I guess they made extra effort to uh, have plenty of room in the classrooms. Uh, the ventilation is very good because it's <laughs> very <all> cold. cold. <laughs> <laughs> and and I did bring a sweater, but I heard Gary say that he wished he brought a sweatshirt, and I yeah. thought um, I'm bringing. I'm not normally cold. But I thought, mm, in a hotel, I'd better bring a, a yep. sweater. So always remember that if you go yep. to these venues. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and uh, in the summer they refrigerate everything. So, right, right. Um, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's been fun. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, that we have is the exhibit, and uh, we we did well. The New York, we we interviewed the chairman, the chair. I, I keep saying chairman, the chair. chair of the New York show, which is next year in August. Right. And that video is up on, on, the, um, on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, then you'll get notified because we put up three today plus this, and then uh, we have at least two more already recorded. And, uh, and, and Beth set them up so that they're all under a playlist, um, yeah. EGA National Seminar 2021. So hopefully we'll be able able to go to 2022. It's called Broadway Bound and it's going to be in New York. So that'll be yep. interesting. Um, the, there's a whole display 
of all the classes, the class projects. Right. Holy smokes. Oh, yes. I, I mean, I could easily take two or three classes. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. I mean, there's some that are just, well, Jane, they're going to get Jane Nicholas. Um, who else was going to Hazel, gonna, Hazel Blomkamp. They have four. International. International. So Hazel, oh, Jane. Jane. Gary. Not Gary. Mike Parr. Mike Parr. You're Gary. <laughs> You're Mike Gary. Parr from Canada. I'll be from the U.S. And then who else? And um, sure. And of course, we don't remember the last person. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, and the... The white I, work. We can't, we can't put the video up till Monday. Right. Because it, it needs to, all the classes go up on the EGA website on Sunday, I believe right. it is. Right. So we have to wait. Otherwise, it would already be up. Right, right. <laughs> so, and, and, so if you are a member of EGA, I think you can register online until October 5th. And so if you see a class you want, now's the time to register. Because if you wait till the March date when your booklet comes out, the best, I don't want to say the best classes, but like the Jane Nicholas class will be full. Some of those classes that are the um, people from Hazel's will be full because they fill first. And so if you really want those classes, you need to sign up before the October 5th deadline. And then, but then in March, they open registration for everybody. So you, and it's a first come, first serve. So let's say there's one opening for Hazel's class and you just have them to slide yours in right then. Then you get it, your first. And they, they open it up to non-EGA members at that point too. So you could join EGA and sign up at that point, but you have to be a member of EGA right. now to sign up for it until October 5th. But yeah, and you know what was interesting to me, and I don't know how to, I haven't, would not, have not compared it to this year, but many projects next year that are not do it and frame it. Right, right. Yeah, many right. projects. Right. So, so we'll have that up on Monday, and, uh, but now the exhibit for this show Again, yeah. very. Yeah, <laughs> it's just right. Yeah, so a lot of very cool pieces. So let uh, now w what we d what we did for today is we all the ribbon winners, all the winners who got ribbons, and then that much we could do today ran out of time, and then we will video the others because there's a whole row of master craftsman projects people who have, have, are working on or have completed their master craftsman and it's a fascinating study of each of the steps right why am I doing this with my hand I do <laughs> not know, uh, know of, of each of the steps that they take to be a master craftsman right. and and to see them live you know um, they sometimes will show up in the EGA magazine but you're ever really curious what do these really look like in person these were it was, and just to see how now I'm doing it how each step Here, progresses. together. <laughs> In rhythm. Very good. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah. This is why we're never together. So That's it's, right. It's yeah, just not good. Could, yeah. yeah, we just probably... The, uh, yeah, so we'll have those, uh, and I can't wait to show the beating one. Oh, yes. Holy smokes. That was yeah. amazing. So, yeah, just impressive stitching. So what we're going to show you now is all the ribbon winners, uh, the ones that got recognized with the ribbons by the judges, and um, uh, yeah, these you'll enjoy these. Yeah. So switching over here to this, and all right, this is, help, help us out here. Take us through it. Okay, this one was, okay, now I've got to find it. It's, oh, okay, this was the Bobby Pilling Memorial Award. So that one's, th these awards are given for people who think out of the box. Um, Bobby was a member of EGA for a long time. Um, I know she was still alive when I first joined but she was trying to get EGA to move away from just doing traditional stitches um, looking at things a little differently so they uh, they start an award specifically with her name in it and so this one is called shell and needle lace and it's by Rachel Watkins and it was the third place winner and we were just amazed by the lace work on that and um, how she I, I was impressed by how she put the shells and stuff. I just thought it was beautifully done I think certainly top two for me of all the, of, of the ribbon winners. Um, this was third, third place in the, 
in the uh, um, uh, Pilling, right? Pilling? Right. Third Pilling. place, but I, uh, of, of all the river winners, I, I certainly top two for me. It's it, the needle lace, but then to make it look like old beat up fishing nets with shells caught in it, I just really think it's a, a beautiful piece. Um, really well done. So that um, that's a good one. So then second place, whoops, wrong way. Second place. It's On the Horizon by Mary Lou Morrissey. Se and that was second place, yeah. So and that was, was that canvas? That looks like a canvas piece. Couldn't yeah, and, and this thing is. You're doing it with your five, fingers again. Five inches, yeah, I'm holding my <laughs> fingers up. You can't see it, but uh, it's like five inches wide. This is very small, very small and, and beautiful. I mean, look at yes, the, look at the landscape detail. depth. I mean, that is as 3D as you're going to get on a two-dimensional thing. And one of the things that uh, she wanted to do was to try and, and achieve this with all straight stitches. So if you think about that, all that detail with straight stitches, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I love the clouds, the way she did the clouds. It's yeah. gorgeous, yeah. So that was that, was that one. And then this was the, the winner, right? Right, this is Grasshopper by Tawny Car Carter. And um, again, um, she, they have to do an artist statement with each. And I think what started this design for her was the fabric leaves. I think it was some, she said, I just had to buy that fabric. How many of us have said that to ourselves and said, oh, I just need to buy this fabric. And then she, all of a sudden, she started getting inspiration from things she saw. And I can't remember, I think it was um, something with the color of the, the grasshopper legs. Anyway, it was just exciting how she put that together with the beads and the stitching. Yep, a little 3D stump work in there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she really brought it out. And uh, I love on the thorax, each of the segments, the way she did a different uh, a different treatment on each one of those. Uh, just, yeah, very effective, very effective. So that was the winner in that section. And so, then and then the rest of the, uh, the, ne the next ribbon, these are from the Golden Needle Awards, and I think the theme was, what do you think is a magnificent stitch? And so that's what they asked for the theme. And this is the Canvas Original, Third Place, and Judge's Choice, Trees of Life by Natalia Frank. Now, Natalia, she's a member of my guild. Congratulations. I'm so excited that you won those ribbons. And again, this is a tiny piece. It's on Petty Point. Um, did she say what count of um, Sogash she used? I don't remember. But this is, again, tiny. It's a small, small. Yeah, this is what, th this is maybe five inches across? Yes. Something like that, yeah. I wish they had, it, it's draped over. I, want, I you know, wanted to see the whole thing. But it's draped over a thing, and of course, you know, there's no way we're touching it. No, um, no, not, we didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. But uh, you know, just gorgeous detail on the most small on the smallest. I mean, you can't really even see stitches. No. It's um. It's tiny. Yeah. And, and and again, beautifully executed. Beautifully executed. Yeah. That's uh yeah that was that was a highlight. Yep. This is again canvas non original third place and judge's choice, blue eyes by Donna Pence. And again this. This is tiny, and it's all tent stitches. How big would you say? That was about the same width, yeah, maybe five yeah. inches. So we're talking a small piece, yeah. Postcard size, tiny, yeah. tiny, and yet, I mean, look at that. It just—it looks like he could leap out at you. Yeah. No, it's it, that's the thing. You, you talk about wow, what amazing stitching. It's all amazing stitching. Right, know? right, <laughs> right, and. It, and just, I can't, I couldn't believe how small it was. That's, I think, what, yeah. how tiny, it's just perfection. I'm All the detail, yeah. Yes. yeah. yes. And then. This was Silk and Metal Thread Original. It was the first place, and I can't pronounce the name of this thing. Appen what was it? Appentees. I think it's Appentees, A-P-A-N-T-E-S-E, -E -E. yeah. Didn't look up what that means. No. Maybe it's the name of the. But the, the gold work on there, um, yeah, fun piece. Yep. And this one, again, not really big. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of these are smaller pieces, but the detail in them is uh, is just impressive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This one, this one is also one two for me. So this was surface embroidery original, third place, best depiction of theme, memories from childhood, by Lynette Maiton. And look at the stump work on that and how she achieved the dimension, uh, you know, the, the perspective. Um, I think that's difficult to do, and she did a great job. Yeah, the blowing hair and the little girl. Mm -hmm. That This whole thing, I, I follow two or three people that make it a practice of doing these pieces where it's from the back and then the, the feature is the hair. And it's amazing what people do. I mean, this this here, like the, the way she created the blowing hair and um, yeah, it's and, and, and the like depth. The, Look at the depth in that. You know, mm -hmm. she really has it. Right, and I love the foreground is very simple and plain, and then she she gets um, a lot of detail in the background, the the reflection of the water on the water, um, the swans. Yeah, the the water when when they do that with the water, you, your eye says that's water. Right. And then you realize no, it it's it's an, a complete illusion, and. Right, but it, that your your eye is registering. Yeah, this is yep. water. This is and yeah, to achieve that. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, I, I really like this one. Yeah, because there's there's so many stories you could tell out of this one. Uh, just a beautiful piece. Yeah. Okay, this one was um, surface embroidery original, second place. Portrait one is the name of it, and I'm not gonna. Rocio Gomez Sandoval. How about that? Huh? Excellent, excellent. And, and I'll I get the names. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> and, I, and I liked her artist statement. She said she knew her stitches weren't perfect, and she almost didn't turn it in. But she decided this portrait represented her, and it was so. And she wasn't perfect, so she was going to turn it in. And again, she won, um, you know, second place with her piece. And I thought, yeah. how wonderful that she took the time to turn it in and, um... and it's such it's such a unique presentation all these uh, um, padded satin stitch things and then uh, <laughs> French knots still <laughs> right 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 but uh, again thinking out of the box yep very creative yeah rich colors mm -hmm. yeah that was a good one yeah and, and I, I agree with you on the artist statement it really said it was just an honesty, a real honest statement about herself and the reality of, you know, nothing's ever perfect. And so let's put, you know, put out there what you have. And, right, right. Yeah, you know, that's a good one. All right, and this was the surface class piece, first place, and it's Well of Wishes by Kathleen Weston. And, yeah, I didn't get a closer look at that one. I was looking at something else when you were taking <laughs> I should have I should have rotated that one around. Yeah, it does I like, spin. I yeah. love I love boxes. I've decided I like um, making shapes, and that's what kind of intrigues me. So I'm kind of um, interested. I'm gonna have to go back and, and look at that one again. Yeah. And rotate it around so I can see all the sides. Yeah, it's uh yeah it's it's interesting. There's so much creativity that that we've seen, and. I think that's, I'll put us both back on. I think that's what, in just the day we've been here so far, right. is, I, I know for me, it's buy somebody's chart, buy somebody's design, execute it, make some variations if you want, frame it, put it on the wall. And what I've seen a lot of this time is, and maybe it's you know, this first time for me, so what do mm -hmm. I know? But, uh, people going beyond that rectangle, frame it, and put it in a wall. Right. <clears throat> and finding different ways to present needlework. Right, you know? right. And, and so you can, and, and also so you learn different techniques. And I, I like seeing all the creativity. I think that's what I liked about the exhibit. It was, wasn't cross-stitch necessarily. It wasn't needlepoint, but doing something a little a little different, which I like. I like different. I like um, seeing what you can do with the stitches, how you can get them to 
make your statement, make it say what you want it to say. Yeah. And, um, and Josie, yeah, you know, it, it almost has a burlap feel to it. I went back to the picture for you. It almost has that burlap feel to it. And we were talking about that a couple in the New York um, uh, exhibit. Yes. But we were talking about uh, that whole thing, the ground using the ground cloth as part of your of of the way you send the message with your piece. Right. Right. It, it isn't just a place to hold threads. Used properly, can you make a statement with it? Can it right. be part of the statement? Right. Right. And I think that's worth some something worth. Uh, worth exploring more is is just that is and, and maybe even something where where we need to look at more when we put our kits together mm -hmm. is what is this project what is the design and then how does the ground cloth not just straight color but do can i get more out of it with a coarse texture right right or, or would it look better on a on, on a smaller weave? Will that make a difference? Because it, it does. It changes. Like seeing those those um, pieces on the silk gauze, which is what um, Natalia's was, and the um, Donna Pence, the the tiger. It was on silk gauze. So how much that intensified the design by just being so tiny? Yeah. You know, it just it just made it. I mean, yeah, you could do it on a big piece, and that would be be fabulous. But making it smaller and mm -hmm. shrinking it down that much, I think, really made it go, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. To me. Yeah. But No, I think there's something there, uh, just in general, to, to look at, and maybe it needs more emphasis than it ever gets. Because um, who was it that, uh, oh, we talked with um, uh, Stephanie at uh, the Fabric Dyer. Right. Working with designers to get just the right color for their design so that the designers are doing that. Right. But then as stitchers, can we add our own dimension right. to it? Like you said, the, the needle lace piece, how she used her threads and it looked like a net. You know, you, she could have done it on ground cloth and it would have had a totally different feel. Right. You know. Well, and yeah, I think that's... Oh, you forgot. Oh, I forgot that, that one. one. Oh, we and, got oh, one more. Yeah, and, you got, and, you, and we got we to got talk one about more. that one. Okay. <laughs> but you have to wait. But see, I, th I think there, uh, now, I mean, this was a, is an open thing, there's no back to it. But now if you take that and, and put that on burlap, does it say something? Right. And even the, the carpet, carpeting uh, panel that it's hung on uh, seems to, to, to me to help fit right in, not planned, but... Um, right, okay, and okay, but also think of the shape of it. It's, it's a circle versus a rectangle, which the circle to me says more about netting, and I don't know why, than a square. I know nets are square too. But to me that also makes more of a statement too than just just a rectangle. Yeah. So when we, we need to think about that too as, as needlework people and needlework artists. You know, what my finished shape. Yep. How it affects. Yeah, those are they're just areas to explore and see when you see all this needlework mm -hmm. together, those kinds of ideas, at least they come to me. You know, wait a minute, there's more to it than just how you put the thread on the ground cloth. Right. right. And now back to the one that we completely ignored. <laughs> we, I, I was going to remind him of it because this was important. This is Canvas, non-original. It won the best of show in Judge's Choice. It's called Fern by Marge Kelly, and that was, um, so that was like the top winner. And I, and I think they um, placed a lot of emphasis on the um, artist statement on these too. Yeah, that was something that we uh, learned uh, in conversations, Right. is that artist statement is not just something you throw together. No. That for judges, it, it, particularly uh, in some of these competitions, it's really the driving force. What, what you're saying about that, how it fits into whatever the theme or the right. uh, expectation is. So it, it, I, I've, what I've taken out of that is spend some time on that statement because uh, it could spell victory or not. Yeah. Right, right, especially in EGA's exhibits because they put a lot of weight on those. Um, it's not just, um, 
it's not just the technique you're using. They don't divide so much by that. It's, it's more about um, their theme of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they want to know how, they want to know what was in your head when you put this together. Right. And, uh, and well, there, there were people that telling the personal side of their life and how the uh, the art was an expression of, of right. trials and tribulations in life, and uh, and and to read those, as uh, right, yeah. right, very moving. And then to see their piece, even though you know um, maybe didn't win an award, you could feel their um, what they were expressing um, too. Which again, I think makes going to the exhibits because you can't. They're not going to show all those. Um, I think they might eventually show. Some some of them on the national web page. Yeah, not but, sure. But, you know, to see them live and in person, it, it, it's always interesting. Yeah. How many judges are there? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. We could, we could ask. Not just one, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, when we were in there, uh, the people uh, that are taking learning to become judges right. were in there. That was a group of probably 10 right. people who were going around. Oh, I, to be a fly on the wall in that group would have been <laughs> worth everything because right. they were going around and you, we over here a little bit as we were walking around. You know, I think I see this and I would say this about it to the artist and judge. And then the question would come back, well, what about this? Right. Or how would you express that mm -hmm. to the artist? Right. And uh, th so that discussion was to just follow them, I really was tempted to just follow along because uh, I got to believe you'd learn an awful lot. Right. But uh, going like what, what Cindy Gershon talked about is how do we evaluate these things, present a constructive critique, right, and be fair and understanding, and you could get that sense out of, of this judging class, right? Yeah. You know. And how to improve, you know, maybe and and like we said, the with the national exhibit at EGA side they want that artist statement. They want to know what you're thinking. It's it's less, I mean, they want good technique, obviously, but they're more interested in that artist statement. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Why are you saying this fits in our theme? Because um, they're trying to, EGA's trying to push needlework as art mm -hmm. rather than um, needlework as a craft. And they've been pushing that for years. And so they yeah. that's one of the reasons I think the artist statement means so much to them because they want they want you to think of your work as art. And, it, and I think it, it comes through in all of the projects there. Mm -hmm. There there is it's art. It is. And, and you see people reaching for new boundaries and new levels in their needlework in in a lot of them. They're not just simply executing whatever the designer uh, put on right. the paper. And you can see that, you can feel it, and it's fun to watch. And you know, some uh, what it, what it was for me is, you know, you go to one of these things and you expect to be wowed by everything, and I wasn't. There were some I just didn't care for. Right. But then when you step back and you think, all right, I don't care for that, but I don't care for all art. You know, right, for, right. I don't care for it, different kinds of art. Right. And this is this now becomes that, mm -hmm. where I, I like this, I don't like this. Right. And uh, and so that you know that's that art discussion that goes on. Right. Right. And and just to see how people execute the different techniques, I'm look really looking forward to sharing with you all the master craftsmen. Oh. Um, some of them are just fabulous. How they. They move through those. They move through those levels. I'm being a ship. <laughs> it's late. It's late, people. It's yeah. Late. Long day. Yeah. But but you can you know and of course each level is yes beautifully done. But then you can see the progression. Right. And when they get to the final level, it's amazing what they put together. Yeah. Because that's amazing. in every one. It's now combine all the things. Right. Or a number right. of them a number of them to make so you can say i'm a master of this yeah and yeah so yeah we're anxious to see the, show you those mm -hmm. and we'll do so we'll show you uh, as many of those as we can get filmed but um yeah really instructive and and you can appreciate that if someone says i am a master of canvas i'm a master craftsman of canvas when you see what they've done right yeah you are
Right. Yeah. Right. You are to get that far, or that the beating one. I can't. Oh, yes. That won't leave my head. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, a, I'm a master. Yeah, I'm a master <laughs> of beating. Yeah, right. you are. Right. You There's are. no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, I think that uh, probably has been the standout thing of the day is going through the exhibits and not just to be wowed by artwork and needlework, but to see art in all the different forms and all the different interpretations. Uh, right, and it's needle art, yeah. not just, it not, it's how people interpret it with needle and thread. And mixed media. Right. A lot of mixed media stuff, people painting on the background, uh, using uh, uh, ribbon embroidery, right, and yep. then uh, and using tech, other techniques to get the layering they want, um, to get the effect they want. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's really instructive. Yeah, and of course, you know, wish you could all be here, but that's why we're here. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Is to uh, to bring these things to you. So um, you know, watch for that. Watch for more. We we'll keep it coming as much as we can. Uh, as fast as we can, and uh, um, right. w w tomorrow I think we're still going to try and find a half hour here or there just <laughs> just for us. Yes. But um, yes. Uh, oh, show the book. Uh, show oh, the book you got. My, here's yeah. my book. Here's my book. So. Yep. How could I go wrong for eight dollars? Yeah, you win. I win. I win. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go tonight in my room and and look through this one. <laughs> So, all right, so that's pretty much it for the day. Uh, uh, yeah. Day one. Day one yep. in the books. Tomorrow, um, winning ways. I think we're listening mm -hmm. to lectures, so we'll talk to you about that. Yep. Um, yeah, there's four lectures throughout the day on different topics. What you're going to be... Um, crazy quilts. Crazy quilts. And what's the other one? I can't remember now. Yeah. And I know I you're be. doing the appraisal yep. and... Yeah, Beth Lindsay on appraisal and then, yes... And you're going to do Debbie Rowley on color. That's it. And um, Crazy Quilt. Right. And then the fourth one, we'll see who that is. Yes. I don't know. Um, so we'll be doing that and then uh, uh, dropping in on some classes. Right. And uh, videoing the, uh, the exhibits. So uh, watch for all of that. Subscribe on YouTube so that you get notified. Right. And we didn't get much up on Instagram today, but um, uh, we'll work more at that. Yes. Um, try to get. I try, and I think the reason people are in classes, and I'm, I'm hoping more people will start will show up for class tomorrow, since it is the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, more people will show up, and we'll see a few more people just stitching in corners. We'll try to. Yeah. Snag yeah. pictures. Those are that. fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Those are fun. All right, folks. Our sponsors up there, Middle Twin. Boy, if if you got an organization and you need to. Uh, uh, streamline and, and need some help just communicating and doing dues and yeah. all those administrative things. Check that out because that, um, I got to say, I, I was impressed with that. Uh, don't have a use for it, but uh, uh, you, you could immediately see how it can help you. And then all this stuff we're talking about, all these projects, Kim, Sassy Jacks, right. uh, she, she can fix you up uh, threads, ground cloth. Whatever you need. Whatever it is. So, uh, and she's bored. Yes. Absolutely. I think we're just going to stick with that. She's, she's bored, bored and we need people to go order things to, to keep her out of trouble. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think we're going to just go with that. Yeah, I think Probably so. Probably not true at all, but <laughs> we'll go with it. It's okay. Yeah, it's good. All right, folks. Thanks. We'll uh, watch for videos tomorrow and we'll be back tomorrow night at the same time with more of this. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Bye.